What when were we at CrossFit, you guys? Like 2001? 2003. 2003? 2001. 2002, for you, 2003. Yeah. So this is before sure. I uh, I had moved what to Florida you? to get work. Yeah, soon as soon as CrossFit has fallen apart. Crushing is falling apart, and, and Alo is trying to draw up a, a marble pitch as fast as possible. <laughs> we were no, seriously. We went out in the behind. Remember, we went out behind the building, and that like there was that grassy field back there, and everybody's on their cell phone calling Marvel in DC because we knew the thing was going under, but we didn't want to. There's always oh, like see. four or five people out there, you know, on their phone, you know, about a hundred yards away from each other, and we all knew what each other was doing. But uh, oh my god. Wow. We yeah, had a but, giant meeting where Alessi was telling us we could, um, we weren't exclusive anymore and we could freelance. As he is telling us that, my um, cell phone in my pocket is buzzing because there's an editor on the phone trying to get home. Wow. Well, so. <laughs> Excuse me, Mark. I got to take this call now. Yeah. That I'm <laughs> <laughs> I took my, uh, before, before that happened, I had a, uh, like, the great thing about CrossGen was that they like gave us a health insurance and like mm -hmm. vacation and it had paid salary, right? We didn't have to work on the weekends. It was like oh, a regular friends. job. I was and wondering was why friends. there was such a, a <laughs> migration of artists to Florida. It's like, why are those guys moving to Florida? Well, you say you dangle health insurance, then <laughs> you know, like, you're a yeah, freelancer, yeah. that's all it takes. Yep. Yeah. Well, I so I had like a week's worth of vacation. This was near the end, right? But we hadn't gotten there quite yet. And, uh, but I, because Andy and I, uh, was Bart's brother, Bart Sears's brother, who was the, was he the accountant? What was, what was his exactly? CFO? Yeah. And so he was feeding us information about the financial disaster the company was in. Oh, and so I took my, <laughs> my week vacation, flew to New York and started hitting up Marvel in DC for work. And I didn't tell anybody. And this is when Rick Magyar was now the new art director because Bart quit. He couldn't stand it anymore, you know, and so he left. So Rick was uh, and I, I told Shelly, don't tell anybody. So Rick calls me during my vacation while I'm in New York. Hey, can I talk to Aaron for a minute? You know, and she's like, uh, he's not here. Right now. He's on the beach like, right I'm now. <laughs> dude, yeah, so I never cool. even knew you he's did in the hot that. tub till now. I didn't know you uh, flew up there. Dude, I didn't tell anybody because I didn't I didn't know, you know, I didn't want it to, to leak or anything well, like that. Yeah, and, I know, but you know, it's been like 20 years, so just say. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I well, I forgot about it until we just started talking about He's it. He's saving it for his death I was Andy. dude, I was I was literally standing out in front of what's the uh that uh that art school that uh, everybody taught School of Visual Arts? Yeah, the visual arts with Walter Simonson and, and Maggie R is coming up and calling me on my cell phone. <laughs> just like, eh. in fact, actually, you know what? I took the call now that I remember and just lied to my teeth because he's like, hey, uh, oh. you know, when can you come back in and blah, blah, blah. I go, well, you know, I'm, uh, you know, can't do it till Monday or whatever, you know, and didn't tell him for a second that I was in New York. Oh, I'm sitting here with Walter Simonson in New York, by the way, looking for work. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, that was. That was very intense as I was sitting there lying to this guy right to his face. And he couldn't tell that you were lying? Oh, oh no. no, dude. <laughs> I'm not a liar, but uh, I'm as, I'm as I, bad as Billy. Point. I could not. Uh, he should have put Billy on the phone. He would have nailed it. Well, dude, <laughs> if I have to, I can I can put on a performance. I just try not to do that. But I'm uh, I'm Like when he compliments our work, guys. That's right. right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. So, so, so basically what you're saying is that you knew you got the inside scoop and you're like, see you later, Andy Smith. I'm going to New York, but you didn't well, say no, Andy that. Knew. Like, I got to beat Andy to, to any work. Oh, no, I knew. Oh, guys that were kind of on the, we, we, that knew everything that was going on. Yeah. I, I love my cross gen timing. I uh, told the new line cinema guy that I was exclusive with cross gen at San Diego in August. And then oh. what, by January, CrossGen was telling us that they were dying or that, could you skip a check this week? So I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, can you skip it? That was a great conversation. So you really need money right now? And you're like, uh. <laughs> And when I told Andy that, Andy's like, you are the biggest idiot. He goes, at the very least, you find out what the guy wants before you say you're exclusive. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I still regret that. No, it, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was getting a little, uh, it was getting a little intense down there. And, and, uh, 
you know, Rick Magyar was, and I don't mean to throw him under the bus, but he, he was calling people and hiring them to do freelance work for CrossGen, knowing that they couldn't pay him. Wow. Mm. Oh, so that's, well, why do you want to throw anyone under the bus? He sounds like a real dick move. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, really? I was saying, really? that, all right, that guy, see, that guy, totally uh, he really friend. rubbed me the wrong way, Mark Alessi. When he, I, I told you guys that story one time, he, he invited me and Debbie out to dinner. He wanted to take us out to dinner. He's creating this new comic book company and admired what we had done with She. I mean, you got to think, this is 90, was it 99 when he started? Yeah. Well, he was making the rounds, talking to people in like 99. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like three years, four years after She came out, you know? So we're still kicking ass, you know, selling, you know, I don't know, maybe 2 million books by this point, you know, just out of my our little company. And as he took us to dinner or something and basically proceeded to berate us about everything that we've done wrong. Oh, <laughs> like he That's basically to wanted to, to tell me that he's going to just be way better than, than uh, anything we ever did. And I'm like, wow. All right. Uh, well, you like, still got those idiots doing that. You got a free Eric dinner July, out of it, though, you didn't you, Billy? Yeah, I got a free dinner out of it, yes. We well, there you go. Dinner. So, you know, you, you take the good with the bad. Yeah. Um, I will say this, though. The environment was set up in a way that we could – we did do our best work while we were there. Mm-hmm. Right. You really liked – so that – I mean, what, that is a joy that, you know, you work nine mm-hmm. to five and, and – and was it nine to five or did – Yeah, well, it yeah, literally was. Literally was. You did were, you guys yeah. go in to the like, studio and yes. work every day? You mm-hmm. had 24-7 access. Cubicles. So yeah. it took a while for Mark to get used to people like – um, Jimmy Chung, who was not a nine to fiver. Now he was there for 12 hours a day, but I mean, Jimmy was just a night owl. So he'd come in yeah. around noon or two o'clock, but he'd be there till two in the morning. Mm. But, you know, it took Mark a while to warm up to that because he was such a nine to five type. So like I'd go in around seven thirty, eight o'clock and then leave around five, five thirty. But you know, some guys were night owls. And once Mark mm. realized, look, the work's getting done, who cares? Yeah. 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 What I background did he come from? Leave at what, 630. So where did, where did Mark come from? Like, was computer he like computer stuff? Computer yeah. stuff? Uh, he sold Rich's a company. That, he sold one of his companies to Ross Perot. Yeah. And that's where he made some made some good bank. So but he was a, he was a comic uh, nerd. Oh, yeah. Time? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's uh, a. Yeah. If uh, he had adjusted arc. his business model, yeah. Crash End would probably still be around because they would have just lost less money each year. Because mm-hmm. so, uh, his that? net worth uh, cut in ha- was cut in half because of the stock market drop crash. But he kept spending the same amount of money that he had already planned on. So it's, it's, wow. it's kind of too bad when you think of it. If they just said, if they had just cut your ideas in half and went with it, they could have mm. just stayed alive. Marvel owns it now, right? They they. Got yeah, up they're putting out. I yeah. think the first Disney thing they're putting it. out is the sigil. Uh, one of the mm. books, sigil. They're putting out an omnibus of that stuff. Yeah, Andy, mm. didn't they just uh, Disney? The only reason they even bought the properties is because they were after that one project. Yeah, they're after that uh, project by uh, J. M. DeMatteis and Mike Plug at that is that. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. all they wanted. That's right. They didn't care about yeah. anything else. No, nope. they saw I wonder, that. Does that Marvel still buy book. stuff? Does Marvel still buy stuff to sink it? It'll just, you know, like well, that's I mean, what they did. Well, they did like that with that Malibu. The, you know, they Mal- bought it. Malibu, and yeah, yeah. Because it was uh, the image publisher at the time. Well, this right? they had budget then. I mean, Disney bought Marvel and chopped the budget twenty percent by twenty percent. So I doubt they buy anything. Mm. Well, well, they're probably it, selling stuff out the back door. <laughs> Mm. Who it was, I, I told Spider-Man I remember pages. telling Shelly, you know, when we when I got the the only reason I went was because I didn't have anything going on. I'd been out of work for uh well, I've been out of work for like three months. I couldn't get anything. And mm. um I finally hooked up with the X-Men office, and then I was gonna be the next X-Men artist, regular artist, and then Ethan Van Skyver got my editors fired. And uh so oh. I had nothing. It's true. It's a true story. And I had nothing. And so they ran into Bart at San Diego and they said, you know, do you want to do this? And so we negotiated the, you know, the pay rate, uh, what I would need to do to, to do it. You know, Shelly didn't want to move, but I was like, well, it's either that or, you know, Walmart greeter. And so uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. But um, 
But I told no, myself gonna... that terse. You wouldn't have lasted at that job. No. No. If we, no. I said, if we can get two years out, if we can get two years out of this, I said, because I mean that that's how it goes, right? These startup companies they usually last about two to three years, and then they go under. And I, it had already been going on for about a year. And I said, if we can get two more years out of this, I'll call it good, and at least it'll give us, you know, give me work for the next two years. And that's exactly what happened. It, it lasted about two years once I started working for Crossland until they went under. Mm. And um, what's the origin of that name? It's not that greatest, I would say. <clears throat> I don't know. Andy, you were there from the very beginning, weren't you? Yeah, but I don't. I actually, I don't know. Oh, it was it was cross genre because if you look at all the books oh. Cross Gen put out, it wasn't one genre. It wasn't like superhero. Every book was a different genre, so it was basically cross. Oh. It was cross generation, but it was kind of like cross genre. It was like way. mostly fantasy. Was what the titles were. Well, you had, yeah, they, you know, the first four books was, one was sci-fi, one was uh, fantasy-based, um, another one was, uh, well, Meridian was kind of fantasy-based as well, but it had a totally different look and feel to it. This so mystic was kind of magic and stuff. Based, it was yeah, different. You guys did have great books, you did, that's for yeah. sure. As a freelancer... Yeah. How when and okay, so Andy, you said you work from 7 30, 8 30 in the morning to 5 30. Being the a freelancer that we basically work all day, right? All day, all night. You know, you go downstairs, you eat dinner, uh, you know, maybe the weekends you do some family stuff, but you're always did you feel any guilt at, in the beginning? Like, oh man, I'm going home. No, <laughs> I, no like it was, I've always worked during the day, I never worked at night, so <laughs> It was really weird for me because I work 24 seven. It's like whenever, you know, Yeah. and um, I, I would come home for, and, and it was, it was great because it was like you get home and you just didn't worry about it. It was like, I'm done with it till tomorrow. You know, there wasn't that sort of weird deadline pressure and all that kind of stuff going on. And then the weekends really freaked me out because I, you're at home and you're like, should I mow the lawn? Should we go to the beach? Should we go do something? Because I didn't have to draw. It's amazing. amazing. What was yeah. the reason behind that, you know, working in the office thing? Was that to perpetuate the bullpen mythology? I mean, what? what I think it was. It was think, he really, Mark Alessi, the guy that owned it and started it, really liked that idea from, you know, the golden age and stuff. And he wanted it, it. So he wanted that, but he also did want the artists to have the benefits of health insurance, vacation days, sick days, okay. Okay. and all that. And the only real way, technically the only legal way you can do that is if they're an employee, you know, going in and stuff. Right. Um, and he figured, you know, it's Tampa, Florida. So it's not like, you know, it's, it's not like in the middle of Montana or something he's asking people to move to. Yeah. So, Hey, do you guys find it uh, inspirational to be working together alongside each other? Or, you know, you're yes. pushing each other and that sort oh, of yeah. thing? Yes. Oh, yeah. It depended on the team. Some writers <laughs> wouldn't listen to you and other writers were uh, awesome about that kind of stuff. Mm. So it just depended yeah, but on you, the felt, you felt like pushed by other people in the studio, right? That you had to do your best work, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There's always inner office drama was there anything that you oh yeah, can, can yeah. Or... Oh, I, yeah. Won't, I won't i won't name drop but someone i <laughs> people were discussing my salary and that they didn't uh -oh. understand why i was getting paid more than they were and they shouldn't have had this information anyway so yeah. i had to grab this one artist who i won't name and uh andy you don't remember doing that <laughs> yeah. it was andy. it's I always had... andy <laughs> Yeah, no, I and I almost uh, almost decked I him. I an, said, I "Dude, my, you know, what I'm making is none of your business, and you guys need not to be having conversations about me behind my back." And you go, "Well, I didn't say anything." I'm like, "You're so full of it. You did too. I know you yeah, for a fact. You did." Guilty. And, and thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, um, Bart Sears' brother. <laughs> I don't know how they found out, but somebody did, and uh, then somebody told somebody, and then somebody got pissed, and you know, so that. I, it really I, yeah, sounds like think, something yeah. Rob Hunter would do. I mean, to it be does. honest. Well, he probably it, was the well, instigator. I he did. Was, he I likes to get raised. So I was always saying, look at how much Alo's making. <laughs> <laughs> Alo. <laughs> 
what what is going on here? What kind of what kind of monkey shit's going on at this company? So I would always I was always stern. I stirred the pot. I'm like, I need another race. And then he would just talk crap about his artwork. Did you see how small he drew that horse on Ghost Rider? <laughs> he did it on purpose because he can't draw horses. He can't draw horses, but I need money. So Dan Genovese says Aaron awesome. threatened violence. Hey. I was much younger and much more fit back in the day. Me and Andy were pumping iron, feeling good That's about right. ourselves. Well, Andy's still in shape. I have uh, not so much. Did you guys go to like Applebee's and stuff for dinner or you have like lunches and hang out? Lunch, like, yeah. Friday or night steak? Was it Steak Jack? Or what was the name of that steak place that was down the road? We went there a few times. What was that? Steak, uh, steak, uh, steak, and, shake. And, steak and Shake, something like that. Oh, you mean that place? Yeah, Steak yeah. and Shake. Yes. Yeah, and then and great. then there was the uh, what was the chicken place? Uh, the Christian no, that chicken. I don't place. remember. Oh wait, God. do you remember that Zach the all you can eat pizza Chick-fil-A. contest? Chick fil A was down the road. We used to go yeah. there all the time. Okay. Remember that the, the terrible pizza contest? Remember the all you can eat pizza oh, contest? Oh well that was Rob, 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 wait a minute. Rob, Hang on a second. Pizza. Elliot Rod. All right. So Rob, what what yes. what's the pizza thing? I'm trying to remember the pizza contest. The the pizza all you can eat pizza contest. What was the pizza place, Andy? Do you remember? It was CC's pizza, but Aaron CeCe's never pizza. partake. It was just you yeah, and me. Did? Oh no, 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 no. Aaron was there. Yes, was I there? Did. No, no, yeah. Brandon Peterson. No, 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 no. Brandon didn't didn't come with us for the pizza contest. So. Ah, Brandon yeah. came up to me of like I was two weeks because I took over the book that he quit drawing, and he comes up <laughs> to me, he comes up to me like two weeks in or a month in or something. And he goes, you know, Aaron, you're doing okay. He says, um, I can see that you're heavily influenced by what I was doing before. But you'll, oh. you'll outgrow that, and your own style will develop. And I about punched him in the face. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? I want to get that book. Was it Chimera or Mystic? Mystic. Mystic, Mystic. yeah. I think I remember you. I mean, obviously, yeah. I was using his designs because he designed yeah. the character, yeah. but I wasn't drawing anything like him. I was like, come on, Brandon. Jeez. You got to look at that. I think you're trying to be me. <laughs> oh you should have just told him he, he's a great inspiration to you. I may have said something like that, you know, being trying to be politically correct. And like, I was <laughs> seething though. I was just like, oh, you got I haven't seen him since I stopped doing work for DC. And, you know, I haven't seen him forever. He lives in Texas as far as I know, doesn't he? Does he? He, he was doing some Marvel stuff here and there. Yeah, um, he was doing covers for a while. Yeah. Where well, he was, he... go ahead. Oh, I was going to just say, he's the guy that was always, he was going on the weekends, Adobe Photoshop, class, you know, power classes. So I'm, you know, I'd be surprised if he even stayed in comics because he was yeah, always into he was digital. And well, that's he, what happened. Yeah. No, he was Frank Cho's stuff every once in a while. For DC. He's been doing a lot of interiors for DC over the past few years. Oh, has yeah. he? Yeah. He used to, he used to do a lot for them. Then again, yeah. I really, but you know, you've seen all this garb. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a really good artist, you know, but you know, yeah, yeah, his is. name. I mean, there's so much garbage out there now for Marvel and DC. Who was working on the turn of the century comic at CG? That was Butch. He's talking yeah, about Rude, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that was Butch Geis, right? Yeah. And Mark Wade before yeah. Wade punched a hole in the wall, right? Oh, and, yes. Yeah. Did he? And, uh, I think Rick, was it Rick? It was either Mike Perkins or Rick was inking that stuff. I don't remember. Wasn't it Perkins? It was Perkins. He was, yeah, you're he right. Was I think it was yeah. Perkins. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Did, Sojourn. Did Sojourn. you see this? They call it, uh, it's like manga, but they call it the Traveler Edition. Yep. So that's like, that's manga sized? Manga yeah. sized, yeah. Oh, interesting. But, yeah, we did three different sizes. We did, or no, we just did the two. We did regular mm -hmm. trade paperback size, and then we did the smaller size we call Traveler. Anybody yeah. work on Soldier? Uh, I did one Greg story. Land and, uh, nobody on this panel. No, no, well, I did. I, I did one story. That was the first thing I did was an issue of yeah. Soldier before he took over. Oh, I, I, did, did you guys hang out? Did you guys all go out with your wives and stuff to go to dinner and everything? And yeah, did, like were you like yeah. your own little like? Did you guys all live near each other? Did he put you up at a compound? Like how? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I had, you know just they all lived in the same apartment. <laughs> it was the one. Just, no, Andy and I itself. lived about a mile apart, didn't we, yeah. Andy? Yeah, we lived real close because I would come to your place and either you or I would drive to the Funny Book store right. on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever it was. Um, Sergio lived close to us. Yeah. For a while there, Bart lived across the street from me, or we lived across the street from yeah. each other. Yeah. 
and we used uh, to yeah, we used to we used to all hang out together. We used to go out to dinner a lot. Yeah. It was really weird when I first moved there. I kind of felt like uh what was that Tom Cruise movie, the lawyer movie, The Firm, you know? Oh yeah. Comics. It was it was really kind of like that, you know. Except there was no organized crime, of course, at least that we were aware of. <laughs> that you know? know of. Yeah, that we know of. We don't know what Alessi was up to, but uh I'm going to assume no. Was it like the someone C- asked earlier in, in the Scientology? He's alive and he's not. He passed away. Yeah, he passed oh. away. What? Probably two years ago now. Three years ago, something like yeah. that. So he was an. Aaron was it like the was it like not the Sea really. Org? He's about our age. What was that, Dan? Was it like the Sea Org in Scientology? Everyone's uniform. Yeah. And- <laughs> we had to take a personality test every week. <laughs> um, 